This is Mitch, and welcome to the 1000houses.com podcast. I'm here with Jack Bosch. We've had a few technical difficulties, so I'm using a fake background and a cell phone, but we're going to get it done because, you know, that's what entrepreneurs do. They just adapt, overcome, and whatever the hell it takes, you just get it done. Right, Jack? That is exactly right, that you just get it done. Like, it's, we have the motto in our company that is, uh, says, faster is better than perfect. There you go. And, you know, um, the content is all that really matters in this because we're trying to educate people. So it, I don't really give a damn what I look like. Jack, you're looking good with your, brack, your brick wall back there and your all professional microphone. So you got your side covered. But mainly we want to get some content out of this man right here. So let's start with that. Give some people your background. No, I'll give some background first of all. I met Jack at Collective CG Mastermind a long time ago, and we kind of hit it off. And uh, since then, we've been in contact with each other, not on a daily basis, but certainly enough to call each other uh, good friends and, and business mentors. Um, I'm always referring to Jack's book, Forever Cash. And right. we're going to be giving away a digital copy of the, that, that book today uh, right. over in the show notes. I'm going to tell you how to get there in a little bit. But right now, I'd like to introduce y'all to Jack Bosch. Jack, tell us a little bit about what you're into. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for, for having me. Yes, I second everything you said. We've become good friends. I look at you as a business mentor, too, um, because you really understand the concept of wealth creation very, very well. Um, so what I've been up to, well, I, we are, when I say we, it's like my wife and I uh, started a company 18, 19 years ago uh, where we flip land. So we are the oddballs in the industry. We do what everyone else says can't be done, which is we flip land for cash and for cash flow. So what I've been up to, I've been flipping land. We flipped over 4,000 parcels over the last uh, 18 years. Uh, we have been teaching this for 12 years now. Students have great success. And and what are we up to right now in the COVID environment? Well, we are trying to find places in the world to go travel to, which is not the easiest thing to find. But we did find Bora Bora earlier in the year because Bora Bora is open for Americans. And since I live in Phoenix, Arizona, we from Phoenix to LA, you got to take a COVID test before. But Bora Bora is basically, or French Polynesia is COVID free. So we were able to hang out there for two weeks and going back, for the, going back right now for Thanksgiving and uh, and uh, because we love traveling, we love, we love doing deals, we love teaching people's uh, deals, and we love traveling around the world. You're doing this land and you're doing it virtually, right? Like you, you, you'll, you'll do it all over the nation. Do you do it out of the nation? Yes, so let's, let's jump into that. So our, our land flipping works, uh, works completely re uh, remote, completely location independent. Uh, it works best in the United States, but it works from outside of the United States. So we just had a Canadian couple uh, report to us just two weeks ago that in the first five months uh, of this year, well, not of this year, but since for in the last five months, so in the middle of the COVID pandemic, they made over $500,000 in cash, cash flow, and equity on deals that they, uh, that they did from Canada. Like people from Germany, I'm originally from Germany. I came here about 23 years ago uh, to basically finish my college degree, met my wife here, my wife, Michelle, who is a co-founder of our company. And uh, she, um, and the CEO of our company, she uh, is from Honduras, Central America. We are uh, in, this, in this business for, yeah, for, for, for many years. But the key is you can do this from anywhere in the country uh, and from even outside the country in the United States. And what we basically do is we basically specialize on properties worth anywhere between five and $200,000. That's our sweet spot that we pick up from people who no longer want them. And that's one of the keys. We're not looking for motivated sellers. We're looking for people really that don't want these properties anymore. And we're picking them up for five to about 30 cents on the dollar. So a $100,000 property, we might pick up for 30 grand and then go sell it for 60 grand. Now, why does it sell quickly? Because it's 60 grand. It's a smoking deal, right? And, or a $200,000 property, like my brother right now has a deal on a contract. My brother, after 18 years of seeing us, finally got into the game. 
He has a deal on a contract right now that's worth $250,000. He went a little higher. So he offered half market value of $125,000, but it could also be worth up to $280,000. And you're going to go flip it for one seventy-five to two hundred. dollars That's a no-brainer. Properties all day long in that area sell for two fifty. dollars so he, he's, he lists his for 280, 290, uh, 180 to 190. He's going to make a 50 to $60,000 on a profit on that deal like that. And we do that from all over the, uh, you can do that from all over the, all over the world. So my, my question is, if it's worth 250, why are you flipping it for, for, for way under? I mean, I understand the move fast, but aren't, aren't you leaving a lot of money on the table? Yes, we are. But there's a, after there's a there's a trade-off in land land sold unless it's a super hot area right if it's like like in phoenix arizona where we live there's uh there's an area in town where a company that bill gates just invested in they bought twenty thousand acres and another big developer bought enough like 30 or forty thousand acres enough to build houses for like three hundred thousand people and and that pocket for a little bit until it cooled down was really hot. So everything sold at market and market prices were going up very rapidly. In such a pocket, you can list at market value and a property sells quickly. Most of the country though is land is desirable, land is sexy again, land is cool. People wanna have a piece of land, people wanna build that house to get away from the weekend. They're, uh, they're sick and tired of being in their houses in COVID and stuff like that. So. Uh, land sells, but land sold at market value tends to sit for up to six months or up to a year before it sells. So land sold at market value sells substantially slower than houses sold at market value. So therefore, in order to accelerate the sale, you got to drop the price a little bit. And the further you drop it, the faster it sells, obviously. So Okay, so, so I mean, but look, obviously... You buy something from 180, you sell it for 225. It's a good day. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not complaining. You know, like right. so. Because I'm always the guy that says, "Hey, make a little, leave a little room for the other guy, and and get to the next deal." And a a, a real house entrepreneur or, or property investor and uh, entrepreneur knows there is another deal tomorrow, and another deal the day after that, and another deal a day after that. Maybe right. the play is. You flip a couple, you got 40, 50,000 in the bank, you're feeling pretty good. You can hold out for six months for this one now while you're doing a couple exactly of other Exactly right. Now it happens that this deal is the very first deal my brother came along. So he so, needs to get paid and get some confidence and get some jingle in his pocket and get his ass, get his, get his wife off his ass. Right. Well, his wife is participating <laughs> with him. He's there, they're doing this together. So they're all. I was, they're all I was joking. I was no, joking. No, but, you know, but I know that happens. Like the family members often are the negative ones and, and you got to show them some coin. You got to show them some money in order to make sure to get their buy-in. hundred percent with you, right? Because it, for most people that try this, uh, most people that start with us, this is not their first rodeo. They're not usually 18 years old, and this is the first thing they find in life. I wish those that do come at 18 year olds and their first thing, great. We just saved them a lot of trial and error in their life. But, but often these are people in their 30s, 40s, 50s. They already tried three other coaching programs that produced nothing for them. And, uh, and, and now they're coming to us, and they're, they're looking at that, and it makes sense, and they're getting it. But yeah, they still, they have, they all, everyone's watching them and everyone's like, oh, he's going to fail again or she's going to fail again and they need to be paid. So my brother's case, he like, could I find, could I, could I float the money for him? Could I lend him the 125K to buy this property or could we find a private lender that, that, that buys that, that lends him the money for that and then he holds out to sell it for 250 or 280? Absolutely, yes. But as you said, it's his first deal. His confidence level, even though I'm his own brother, his confidence level in himself on being able to do it. It's not the confidence in me. The confidence in me is there. He knows it works. But the confidence, it's, it's the confidence that people, the lack of confidence in themselves of of the thinking, can I do this? That go, that thing skyrockets, even if they just make 25 grand on that deal, if it just sells it yeah. for whatever it is. So it's all about getting, it's all about raising that confidence to the first two, three deals. And then, okay, they're like, okay, now this works. Now I know it. Now they're open to taking on $125,000 loan, sitting on a property for three quarters of the year to then make $150,000 on it. Okay, so 
number one, I, I call that hush money. So we need to put some hush money in the bank and, and you know, enough money so that everyone will just shut up and leave you alone for a little while. Um, I'm glad he doesn't have that issue, but it's so critical that sometimes just to get your first deal done, it doesn't make, matter if it makes $5,000 or it makes $500. You need to make a profit and, and right. prove to yourself you can do it. I have people ask me all the time, Mitch, does this stuff really work? I said, what do you mean does it really work? I've been living off of it and getting wealthy really for the last 20 years. Of course it works. That's not the question. The question is, that will, can you do it? You know, and if I'll try to help you, but I can't do it for you. Right. And I think you also mentioned, you know, the 18 year olds, they may be more pliable and easier to teach and, and, and less likely to have to unlearn things than the older right. people. You know, yeah. I think it's just like learning to play the piano. It's a lot easier when you're really young than it is at 50 yeah. to learn how to play a piano. Well, um, tell me about that. I just started piano lessons again. I stopped at age 10 and started it last year again. Holy finger, my, my, my fingers are stiff. I like, I'm advancing, but it's a whole a lot harder now than it was back then, yes. Good, we'll write a song together when you get up to speed here. There um, go. Yeah. So uh, you don't need money to do this. I mean. You, Let's don't split hairs here. You need a little bit of jingle in your pocket. I mean, sure. I don't know, some amount. You need at least be able to um, pay for the course of the mentor. But I'm saying you don't have to be uh, over the top wealthy or have a big savings account to get this done, right? Right. I mean, I always compare it to like just the simplest of franchises is something like a Subway franchise store. The Subway franchise store costs you to between two hundred fifty and four hundred thousand dollars, depending on size and location, in franchise fees, in store build out, in in training costs, and all this kind of stuff before you even open the door, right? And then you have to have a bunch of employees have to work three shifts because this thing is open from eight in the morning till ten at night or so. That's more than two shifts usually. You have to have the weekend; it's open twenty four seven or like seven days a week. You have to have different. Um, yeah, different shifts at work on different days. You have to do accounting. You have to do bookkeeping. You have to open the store, close the store, order stuff. And then the average American franchise owner of a subway franchise owner makes $60,000 a year for all that work. You don't have to have that kind of money to start land flipping, right? You have to have money, yes, for the course, mentoring if you want to. And then you have to have a little bit of money for marketing. Other than that, you don't need any money because the typical deal that our students are doing these days is that they get a deal like one of our students, he's from India, Anshul, uh, his very first deal. He got a deal on a contract for $60,000. Again, it's a deal where he left a lot of money on the table, but it was one of his first deals for $60,000. It was worth probably one fifty. dollars He sold it for, for $108,000 or $48,000 spread. And, and he did a double closing, like a, a double closing where the buyer's money was used to pay everyone in the transaction. So the buyer wire, wired in $108,000 or $109,000. The title company took two or $3,000. The seller got his $60,000 and $46,000 a $46, profit went to Anshul, uh, who spent exactly zero money on the deal other than a few hundred dollars in marketing, right? to actually get, get, get the deal because we do a direct mail system. So we send letters out to, uh, to, to people that we have identified based on our selection criteria as high, can, of, of high, high likelihood candidates of not wanting their properties anymore. When we send out letters, we get a response rate from anywhere between like two or three and, and as, well, as high as 10% because we're dealing in a non-competition environment. House flippers typically get like a quarter or one or two percent or so. We start typically at two percent, go all the way to 10, sometimes even 15 percent response rates. And then we go make those people an offer and then some accept, right? So my brother right now spent, sent like 2,500 letters out and he got four deals accepted already. So that basically is an average of about 625 letters per accepted offer. In other words, it costs you about $400 in marketing to get a deal that you make thousands of dollars on and including one that he's gonna probably make like 30 grand, one is gonna make like 50 to 75 grand, one is gonna make 10 grand and the fourth one just came in yesterday so I don't know what he's gonna make on that one. So, but bottom line is, is that worth it? Yeah, so you need a little money well, for marketing but you don't need, let you me, don't let need, me, let me, you let don't me jump need 125K in. to get the deal. Let me jump in though, because sure. I want really, I'm always a fan of, you know, I always got to talk about the downside, all, all the stuff. How much did he have invested in you? 
I mean, how much did he pay to get your tutelage? Well, in this case, it's my brother. He got it for free, right? But uh, No, he's in India? No, no, no. My brother's in Germany, but I talked about two different guys. Yeah. The guy but, that did it from Germany, the Indian guy, he lives in the United States, but uh, he does it from the United States. He's about to move to Canada, though, because he getting a green card as an Indian citizen is e much harder than getting it as a German citizen. So he's about to move to India, uh, move to Canada, and then continue doing deals from Canada. But the, the guy, this, this guy, his name is Anshul, he, um, he, how much had he had invested? He bought our course and he bought our software because we have a kick-ass, uh, sorry, I hope they can say that yeah, word here. It's okay. Uh, a, great, uh, a great, great software that's a deal automation and workflow software that has integrated websites and has integrated uh, buying websites, selling websites, integrated data feed, integrated mailing house. So it's really, it it's automates like 75% of the steps that you do in the process. So he has the software, he has the course, and with that, he was able to do it. Now, other people need more hand-holding. They engage in coaching. Coaching is different price points, but but in this case, he was in for about $2,500. That's, uh, that's, there, that's my point. Yeah, that's my and, point. And that's if this from, guy's made thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 with right. you know, a three or $3,500 investment, and he had, to, he had to spend some time. He had to get committed. He had to learn, right? You can't, you don't, there's, no free, there's no free way to make a lot of money. There's hardly a free way to make a little bit of money. So, right. so I just want to make sure we're painting the right picture for people, but it's a no brainer. Um, and, and what I really like about your system is it's a national, you're, you're, you're open to the nation, you know, you're open to the nation. Uh, wow. You want some tax write-offs and you want to go someplace. You, should, you can write off just about every place you want to go. If you right. find a lot there for a little bit of nothing. We, you know, we so. go to, and it's not like you have to buy a lot when you go there. You can, you just need to go look at it because not every deal that you look at, you end up buying, right? If you drive well, that's down right. the road. You could say, you know, I'm, I'm going to Florida to look at a lot. You buy your airplane right. tickets and you might stop by Disneyland on the way out. Right. You go look, you go visit the county, get, perhaps get a few maps, go talk to them, go to like the zoning department or so get a database of their county lists or something like that and, 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 and document that. We do the same thing when we go to Hawaii. Like we go when Hawaii, when it's open again, we'll go there usually twice a year. We go to Hawaii. We love it. It's our kind of happy place. And uh, we go visit the county offices or we go uh, make an appointment with a, with a broker because we love real estate anyway, right? We go uh, look at some stuff. We go take some pictures and so on. So if the IRS ever comes, uh, we can prove that we actually spend time on looking for real estate in there whether or not we buy something is a different question right now of course if i find a great deal i'll go make the offer and so on but again the thing is or we own land on hawaii right now actually we have, we bought some lots and we're also always holding a couple back that we're not selling so we can go visit them and so on i'm not going to make the impression that you should you should talk to your cpa about that to make sure you do this in a proper safe and legal way but uh, but bottom line there's definitely ways that you're going you you want to go to uh, I don't know, to Idaho, visit your family. Guess what? There's land there. So you go for Thanksgiving, visit your family, and then you also go look at some land out there. You potentially, check with your CPA, might have just made that trip tax deductible. Yes. Yes. Uh, so let's talk about, I got two, two things. I want to talk about a case study that was just brilliant and over the top. Uh, maybe a really one, one that really stands out. And then I want to talk about a case study where things didn't go so well and and, you know, maybe the worst happened. Okay. Well, a case study where everything is fantastic is a case, is a deal that we did last year. It's just such a perfect example. So there's this infill lot. So an infill lot, obviously everyone knows what that means. It's a street, 35 houses, one empty lot, ready to be filled in with a house, right? That's why they're called infill lots. So there's an infill lot in a part of Phoenix, Arizona that I live in, where we send out some letters in that area. Owners called us back. We made some offers. One guy accepted this multifamily zoned lot. Now it's a small lot. You can put like a fourplex on it, but, um, or four to six units. He accepted our offer for $5,000 on that property. And uh, there used to be a house on there. It burned down. Uh, there's nothing fun, nothing, nothing. Dang. There's no environmental issues. We checked all of that. So we actually bought that property. So we used our own money to buy this property for $5,000. It's not a big deal. I figured, hey, five grand, what the heck? So then oh, we so immediately- let, Let's see, let's talk about that for a minute. The house burned down. They probably already collected all the insurance money that they right. were due. And now they got this lot in their name that has a slab and a 
you know, and, it, and it's black because from the smoke. And so they said, you know, they don't care. They got paid. They got paid right. by the insurance company. Exactly so right. they said, give me 5,000 bucks a year, right? Right, exactly. So I bought this property for, we bought this property for $5,000. Then we put it up on the market and we literally put it on, on like Zillow and Facebook marketplace. Two completely free resources, right? So anyone that owns a property or has it on a contract can put it on Zillow and you can put it on Marketplace. Our contract that we have with our sellers, even if you don't own it yet, has, gives you the right to remarket the property. So, and so therefore, we, um, we marketed the property, it took less than two weeks. Somebody offered us $67,000 for that property and gave us $6,500 as a down payment. So, so now, basically, we carried back a note, the seller financing deal, something you're very familiar with, right? Uh, you guys sell lots of houses, seller financing. We have a seller financing note for $60,500. Let's call it $60,000. And we got more than our $5,000 that we paid for the property as a down payment. So within two weeks, we paid five, we got $6,500 back. We're in the, we're in the hole, we're, we're, we're safe, right? We got an even including closing costs. We're like 500 bucks ahead of the game right now, right? So now we sign them with a contract for deed. So it doesn't even have to go on the sales side. It doesn't even have to go to title companies. So we just had them sign a contract for deed that they make in monthly payments. Um, and, and now they're paying us, like they needed a low payment. So we agreed to a low payment of, I think, no, $430 a month for the next 20 years. So we agreed to a 20 year note. The, the profit on that property is going to be $111,000 uh, over the next 20 years. 111 or $120,000, I don't have the numbers in front of me right now. But good enough though, good enough. We took right? a deal for five grand, got our money back almost instantly, and now we're making $120,000 off that property in the, next, uh, in the next 20 years. And the nicest part about it, because it's seller financing and because it's a piece of land, they're not even destroying the property. If anything, they're improving the property, right? Because if they start building a sixplex on there or something, chances are we're gonna get bought out by the lender at that point. But if they buy it with their own money and they build it and they default anytime, we get now the property with a, with a, with a sixplex on it. Or if they do nothing and they, just, and they default down the road, so what? Then we just foreclose on it, which in certain states on a, on a contract for deed, you can foreclose in three weeks and it costs 50 bucks. And then you get the, we get the property back and now we resell it for another $67,000. But the bottom line is they're not destroying anything. They're not, they're not stealing anything because it's just land. It's the purest, purest way of cash flow.